Well, hey, welcome to the Brian and Jesse show. Uh, Jesse is not here, but I found a friend. He's, I was hanging out. He saw me in the parking lot. He said, come on in. I'll he do was a show. in the neighborhood, and he came in. Uh, I'll tell you what, he's not as good looking as Jesse. I mean, you're kind of well, a I disappointment on the uh, looks yeah. side. Yeah, well, that's good. But, that's actually yes. good for you. <laughs> but he makes up in his knowledge base, and uh, it, it's an honor for us to have Rabbi Khan here with us. Thanks, Rabbi, for coming to Amarillo. A blessing to be here. First, Well, first time in his, uh, his church, you know, in Amarillo. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, it's always an honor. We've had you preach in Kentucky yep, a couple of yep, times. Yep. And yep, uh, you're a household favorite now. Oh, thank I mean, you. you're our favorite rabbi. Thank you. <laughs> well, you have one more favorite. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> much better. Much more <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not talking about including <laughs> no, no, no. the big guy. A little right? one, right? A little We're talking one. about the thank guys you. down here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, hey, we we, uh, we appreciate what you do, appreciate your work. Thank you. You've been a blessing to the body of Christ worldwide, a blessing to my family and our thank churches. You. And uh, I see your voice, right? I'm a local church pastor. It's what I do, lead and love the, mm -hmm. the people of Christ. Uh, we're in such a tumultuous time in America, and we need strong guidance. We need the word of the Lord. Uh, we need somebody that will tell us what's really happening that doesn't care just about um, appeasing people and keeping bodies in seats, right? We have to tell people mm -hmm. the truth whether mm -hmm. they like it or not. Buy right. the truth and sell it not. That's right. Uh, so I want to know, we're coming into such crazy cultural waters. It's 24, it's an election year. Mm. What, do you, what, do you think, what do you think is coming down the, the pipe for America 2024, 2025? <clears throat> Where do you see us, Rabbi? Well, I, I've, been, I've been feeling as we're approaching this year, we just, you know, we're just starting the year, but I've been feeling, number one, a, a year is going to be dramatic and it's a year of warfare. Um, and, you know, it'll, in every realm. The political realm, you know, warfare, you know, um, and and the other thing is, I want to say something, you know, because tonight we're going to talk about a lot of things when I'm at at at, at the church, you know, whatever, but also, but Trump is part of that, you know, be, be part of this thing as well. Trump is not the answer, you know. The answer no. is the Lord, you know, only. But he, Trump is being used in all different ways, and it can be very dramatic. What happens? Number one, with that, um, the what's happening to America? I mean, we have not stopped this this free fall, this, you know, there is revival and, and there is revival in the mist, but as a nation, we have not turned this culture yet. You know, the culture is plummeting, is descending, is apostate away from God. Um, and when you do that, you open up the doors, you open up the portals to what is not God. You know, things that we didn't have to deal with basically in Western civilization ever since uh, Christianity came in and the gospel came in, it kind of cleared out that stuff. Western civilization was pagan, except for Israel, it was basically pagan. That stuff was cleared out by the gospel. So we have not experienced certain things that we're beginning to experience and we will experience. And so when you take God out, other things come in. And so, you know, one is dealing with the demonic, you know, and, and I've never heard people speak about the demonic so much as I'm hearing now, you know, number one. Um, so, you know, so one thing is until and unless we change the, the overall course of the culture, unless there's a turning, um, it's going down, you know, and it's going to be more polarized. And the, the grays are going to be disappearing. Nominal Christianity will be disappearing. Um, the, the dark will get darker and the, the, the bright, the, the, the lights, which may be fewer, but they'll be more powerful. The, the lights will shine brighter. That's kind of like, it's kind of like one of the mysteries is that everything goes back to the beginning. You know, the way the, the age began with the gospel with, you know, going out and with basically a pagan culture and a powerful book of Acts. Well, that's how it's going to be at the end. You know, there'll be a pay. It's like a you know we're watching the world turn back to this anti-Christian culture, but we're but those who stay strong are going to be like the Book of Acts. So you know, God says, "I will pour out my Spirit." God says, "The gospel will be preached." So Amen. it's not that the, that the end times are just bad times. There's evil and there's good. It's radical times. The r radical evil, radical good. So I mean, I'm not you know. So I I, I look forward to it. It's going to be exciting. You know, yeah. but but it's going to. I believe there'll be you know. Will there's going to be chaos. There's going to be shame. Shaking, there's going to be uh, warfare. Yeah. I, I see. I keep seeing. Um, and it's not something you want to say, right? You, you don't like proclaiming bad times are coming. Mm -hmm. But I do see, I see hell in the streets in America. Mm -hmm. I see hell in the streets, but I do see, like you say, heaven in the church, revival, mm -hmm. right? So you're talking like, uh, like you say, a book of Acts move 
in the midst of a pagan culture. Yeah. Yeah. Both of these things were raised simultaneously, yeah. Yeah. simultaneously. And I think that that seems to be historically God's recipe for revival. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen, it's the recipe for the Book of Acts. You know, it is. when we say the Book of Acts in a pagan culture, the Book of Acts was in a pagan culture the first time. It's going to be, you know, that's when you get it. Because when everybody's a Christian, you know, some of us grew up, you know, where it, it still, you know, it depends who's watching and what your age is. It was, it was everybody said this is a Christian culture. Sure. You know, everybody did. You know, the Democrats did. <laughs> you know, Republicans did. Everybody did. But when everybody does, then it's kind of gray. You know, then it doesn't have to be real or, you know, it doesn't have to be radical because everybody's a Christian. It doesn't necessarily mean as much. But w now it means much more because now it's not taken for granted. If you're a believer, there's a cost to it. There's a price to it. It's, you're not going to win popularity contests, uh, but there's a power that's greater. And again, it's like that, it's like that candle in the dark, much more powerful. Maybe it may, be, it may be harder, you know, to shine in the dark, but when you shine in the dark, you light up the world. So this, you know, that part is exciting. And even the fact that one of the things about the return, like the end, everything returns to the beginning, you know, Israel's back. You know, Israel was there in the book of Acts. Well, it's back. You know, so Jewish people back then were coming to Jesus, the Messiah. Well, they're coming again. So, and the church is coming back to its roots in many ways. You know, it's never been, that's never been together either. So all the stuff is being put in its place. The fact that even now we are focused on Israel, the whole world focused on the little New Jersey sized little land called Israel, the whole world. The Bible says it. It's telling you the Bible is true. So even though in a sense that was demonic and the worst things get, you know, the, yet they all the more prove the Bible. You know, the, the, Israel's still there. Israel is going to be in their end times. The world's going to focus on it, says it. There's going to be a controversy against it. The devil's going to try to destroy it. Well, it's happening. You know, and the other thing is that when this started happening in Israel, People said, you know, talking to me, and I said, you know, if it happens in the physical realm, you know, Israel is the physical sure. kingdom. But uh, those who are born again are the spiritual kingdom and the spiritual Israelites. We're all joined together, but that's physical. Yeah. So when the enemy attacks Israel like that in the natural, you know he's going to be attacking the kingdom of God in the spiritual. So, so be ready, but be strong. Israel has to be strong. Be strong. Be, be, in some ways, we have to become more like spiritual Israelis because they, they just say, we got to fight. We don't care. We're going all, you know, and we have to be the same way. These are times of uh, unprecedented spiritual warfare. And I see it right now. There are punches and counter punches yeah. between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. That's right. And our people have to be prepared to endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. It's a different day. It's a different hour. Um, I think there's a different training, a different teaching has to come to the body of Christ, right? It's, it's, it's not, and this has been used a lot, but it's not a cruise ship, it is a battleship. And you're going to have to be able to stand in the evil day. We need a real lion likeness right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, we've lost that. We've gotta be the lion yeah. and the lamb, but the lion's gotta step up. Yeah, and, and, and that happens when, when this polarization happens. Again, when, when you have a lot of the church, one of the reasons you know, is, is, is not ready and is, and is also very much sleeping and very much timid and very much, you know, because it's like the world is on the offense instead of the church being on the offense. You know, I mean, in much, you know, yeah. the mainstream. The world, we're supposed to be on the offense affecting the world. The world is on the offense affecting the church. Yeah. And so that's not going to do it. You know, that's not going to make it. That's going to, that's the gray that's going to fade out. So we're either going to, like it's like the ground beneath your feet, it's going both ways. It's an earthquake. You got to go one way or the other. You can't stay in the middle. You know, you, you go all out evil or go all out good. You're going to be either swept away or you're going to stand. But you're gonna, if you don't want to be swept away, you got to stand. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. I see a lot of the church that's tried to ride the middle as a controlled opposition by the camp of the enemy. Right? Like, like in politics, there's yeah. always been controlled opposition. Yeah, the loyal right, opposition. Right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll let you have your, you can go so far. But you can't say this, you can't touch that, you're not going to get on this ground. So, so political powers have always found uh, opposing powers that they could control, and they give them so much chain. Mm -hmm. And I think those type of Christian movements are going to have such a hard time surviving yeah. in these tumultuous waters. Yes, you're going to have to make, you're going to have to choose because you can't, you know, say, well, I, you know, I, want, I don't want to say this because I'm going to get, I'm, they're going to come out. I don't want to, it's going to come to you. If you it's don't, if you, if you don't fight it, in the public square, you're going to fight it at your home, at your doorstep, That's at your right. church. So you better fight it when it's over there. Don't wait for it to come to you. Let's fight in your backyard, not in yeah, my backyard. Exactly. I don't, exactly. I don't want to. Home team advantage. <laughs> yeah, or, or I want it right here where or I something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or something. Yeah. Tell, tell me this. You just talked about a culture getting more demonized. Yes. And uh, 
I've been watching Rabbi like, like I've traveled the world preaching the gospel, right? All over the world. And used to, I would see like overt demonic possession all over foreign countries. I would run into it here, right? But not all the time. But I'm telling you, in the last few years, I've watched like the demon possessed, like thrown down on the ground, writhing, manifestations unlike I've ever seen in what used to would have been gospel-centered states in America. I think, I think the, we've opened up doors and the demonic are coming in at unprecedented levels. Yeah, it, it's, it's totally biblical and it's totally what Jesus said. And, the, and this goes along with The Return of the Gods, which is okay. the book before the last one I, I wrote. And that is, and the, and this is, you know, we we the answers in the Bible, and a lot of people just don't, just don't realize it, and don't even Christians don't they miss it. Jesus said that he spoke about the man who's possessed. He says, and the demons went out of him, and then, or one demon went out of him, and then then it comes back, and it's a, it looks at the guy, the guy, it speaks to the guy as his house. The guy says, I left my house, I'm going back to my house, and he finds the house empty, clean, swept. Meaning the guy was delivered, but he was never filled by God, or he, or he is right now empty of God. And so therefore, then he goes and he gets his seven others, and they go back, and the guy is eight times as bad, and now he's repossessed, and it's worse than ever before. Now, people think, okay, that's about, you know, it's a warning. If you know the Lord, don't go back. Well, that's true. It applies that way. But it's, he, he, said, he said something else. He said at the end, he said, so it shall be with this generation. And see, he wasn't talking about just one guy. He, it's a generation. generation. And so, and here's the, here's the big picture. Here's the big revelation, I guess, for people who don't, didn't realize this. You know, Western civilization, where we are, you know, which has basically taken over the world, was originally, as I said before, was a paganized culture. It was like all the cultures, except for Israel, it was pagan. The gospel came in, cast out the gods, you know, and they worshiped the, you know, when they worshiped the gods, these, the, the Bible says behind these gods were demons, demonic spirits. So, so, so what happens, the gospel comes in to Rome and drives out the gods, drives out the spirits, drives out the gods, exercises the civilization. I mean, as much as an, a civilization can be. That's what's, that's what's made what the West different from the rest of the world. Sure. And so the thing is, it's been exercised, but, but there's a warning. And the warning is that any culture, any civilization, any nation, anything that has been so delivered, so exercised, if it should ever turn away from God, that delivered, ever turn away from the gospel that saved it, if it should ever do that, then what was cast out of it will come back into it. And specifically, the ve so what it means for the West, including America, even though America was, you know, kind of in a sense born saved, but it's from Western civilization, so it still has that. Any, if we turn away from God, these spirits from the, from the beginning, these ancient spirits are coming back. And that's, if you want to understand what's been happening to America. They're bringing their friends with them. They're too, bringing their right? friends with them and they're coming back worse. They, so it means that what's going to happen in, as you go to the end times is, is not going to be just pagan. It's going to be worse than pagan because pagan is, was the first state. This is the, the second. This is when the eight times worse comes in. So, so the thing is that, that what we are watching now is that. And so an amazing thing is we can actually identify those spirits, identify those gods, at least the main ones can identify those gods. And that's what, in the, in the Return of the Gods, I called it the Dark Trinity, because this is what, when you look at Israel, when Israel turned away from God, these three were the main things that just destroyed them. And those three exact same spirits, gods, have come to America and the West. They're, they're showing up and manifesting yes. themselves. Uh, obvious in the public square, in the education system. The Total. philosophies? Total. I mean, I'm talking everywhere you look. Uh, less entertainment? Yeah. They're showing up and showing out all the Corporate time. Corporate world? Everywhere. Corporate e world. Everywhere. See, See, the, the very th it's interesting, because the, the things that were once in the closet or in the shadows or in the, the underground and you know, whatever you call it, whether it's atheism, whether it's, whether it's alternate sexuality, whether, it is, uh, whether it's pornography, whether it's kill abortion, all this stuff was in the shadows. That's where, the, that's where these spirits were. Yeah. But now they're not in the shadows anymore. Now what was in the shadows has taken over the culture and, and trying to drive Christians into the closet and into the shadows. But we're, every single one who's watching this is dealing with it right now. Yeah, it's like David's sin's full manifestation in Absalom's sin, right? Uh, up on the top when he slept with all of David's wives yeah. in the open. Yeah, Right, what David had right. messed up in his life, like is multiplied out in the open in Absalom. That's right. And that feels like what's happening in the culture right yeah. now to me. Yeah. Who, who would have thought you send your kids to school, right? We're in West Texas right now. 
And like one of the first questions they're asked in a West Texas elementary is, are you male, are you female, are you boy, are you girl? I mean, that would that would have blown Texas. my mind 10 years ago. West, it's like, it's like as red as it could be out here uh, politically. Right, there's churches but the everywhere. School, the school system is run by a different, a different thing. You know, one hundred percent. And and the thing is, that's what I found, Brian. And actually, the last time I was with, well, I was with you, and 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 it was speaking about this is not in Texas, but it's in a conservative state, and speaking about children on the first day of school, this happening where they're asked, "What's your preferred pronoun?" That has that that even a few years ago wasn't happening and no. it wasn't it wasn't happening in new jersey where i'm from and that's a blue state it wasn't and so now it has spread to the entire culture and and until you get to that until you get to the children until you get that you're not changing the culture i mean you know you're not going to change you're not going to change the fate of america you know without the gospel without revival america's gone it's gone you know and and this is where it's gone and the thing is the exact things that we're talking about in ancient times it's all there you know, they, there was. I'll just give an example of one. There's, there's three of these gods, and then there's a, this form of it. One I called the Transformer, and that is, this was a goddess, Ishtar. It's the goddess of sexual immorality, and you watch how you know whenever, whenever a culture like America or Christian turns away from God, what happens? Sexual immorality comes in. The spirit oh. comes in, and it came in like clockwork. We, we said, okay, we'll take God out of school. We'll take just a, no big deal. We'll take. And what happens? Like within a few years, sexual revolution. Everything changes. Marriages are destroyed. Divorce. Everything. But it what didn't stop. It never stopped. And the thing is that when this goddess takes control of a culture, it's not just about adultery and premarital sex. Then it goes into her darker work. And her darker work, it says, in her ancient inscriptions, I put it in the book so people can see it. The ancient inscriptions say, he says, says, she says, I am a woman, I am a man. She says, it says she has the power to turn a man into a woman and a woman into man. She is the principality of, of, of androgyny, of bending gender, replacing gender, confusing gender, turning a boy into a girl, girl into a boy. In fact, it, you know, it, it says she dresses the one as the other, so she has the one dress as the other. It's taken over our culture. And Everywhere. the thing is, it's not an accident because this is exactly what happened. And the thing is, even with it, you know, with this one, it says that she actually, she actually had so her followers, her priests, surgically transitioned from men into women. It says they dance before her with scalpels celebrating their transition. She's the goddess of trans, you know, from ancient times. And the thing is, and this was something that was driven out of the, of the, by the gospel. Now it's back. In fact, they had the month of June was her key month to take over a culture. Now you think of June. You know, in the month of June, there were parades. She had ancient parades where men paraded as women and women as, as men. And her sign was the sign of the rainbow. I mean, it, there's so much to this. And in fact, I'll just, there's, there's too much I could say, but, but if you look at every Supreme Court decision that altered sexuality and marriage, we all remember when that happened, there was three major ones over 12 years. Every single one of them happened on the same exact day, same exact day, which is linked to the goddess. Every single one of them happened in June. Every single one of them happened on a specific date that was linked to the goddess. In fact, in fact, when remember when Obama lit up the White House, oh, yeah. and that was that was marriage. That's when marriage was struck down. Well, that on that day on the ancient Babylonian calendar, that day on the ancient calendar is the tenth of Tammuz. That day it says is appointed to cast a spell to cause a man to love a man. That's the day that marriage as we knew it was struck down. That's amazing. And that is demonic. Yeah. Man, man, we so changed the fabric of America forever when we allowed that Supreme Court decision to go that oh, direction. Yeah. I'll never forget where I was. Oh, I, was yeah. I was at a pastor's conference, and the night before it happened, we were gathered together, and there were big players on the stage. And I'll never forget, a pastor took the stage, and he was talking to us younger pastors. He said, you younger guys, what's coming to America, here's what he said. He said, uh, there's a sexual revolution in America, and so that we don't look like bigots, we should never talk about this issue again on a Sunday morning in our congregation or a Wednesday night. This is, this is how he counsels, Rabbi. And I'm sitting there, and I'm in my 30s, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a fireball, and he, he, he opens up for questions. There's a couple hundred of us in the room. My hand goes up. And he asks everybody else in the room, he won't call on me because he knows who I am, right? He won't call on me. And finally I say, listen, with what you've just told us, how does someone get delivered 
-hmm. from this demonic attack against their life if none of the lead elders of the body of Christ will bring up this issue on a Sunday morning. And he had a mic and I didn't and he turned it and tried to make me look like a hateful bigot because that's the play, right? If you don't agree, you're a bigot. And uh, I was a leper in that fellowship from that point forward. Good for you. I was a leper. Good for you. And you know what I did to get back at them? I won their golf tournament that afternoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I left and I never went oh, back. Oh, my goodness. And I watched if, if the preachers took that kind of position back then, where uh, will, will America go? Yeah. And, and, yeah. and we, yeah. Did, we have not led well, and we have not, not us, but I'm saying as a movement, the men overall. that should have speaking out, should have been speaking out, we, uh, we abdicated the culture to the demonic through our silence. Yeah. And, you know, listen, he, he said you're the light and you're the salt. You know, and when we know salt preserves, and we know that light lights up darkness, active agents. But if, the, if we don't do that, what is it going to mean? If the culture is darkened, then we, you, there's got to be something with a light not working. I mean, some lights might work, but some work, so a lot of them are not it's working. Or how could it be that dark? I mean, if I have lights here, it's gonna, it all depends on the lights. And the other thing is that if the salt is the salt, it couldn't get this rotten. You know? and, so, and so it does say something. I mean, people have free will. You know, they're going to think... But the fact is the church has become, that, that's the, the problem right there. You know, because, because it's, we're on the defensive instead of being on the offensive. And that is not the way God called us. That's not what God has for us in the end times. And God will anoint the one and he will honor the one and he will empower the one who says, I don't care. I'm all out for the Lord. Come what may, let the chips fall where they may. I don't care. I'm here for the Lord. I'm not here to survive. I'm here to go forth. You know, the last book that I wrote, I'm going to talk about it uh, here. Uh, is the Josiah Manifesto. When you look at Josiah, Josiah, he's real. There, there's, there's many reasons why prophetically we're at this Josiah moment. But Josiah came late. The, the nation was going to be judged. The, the, nation, in trouble. The, the nation was into killing their babies. Sure. The nation was into sexual immorality. The nation was into, into gender confusion. And, and, just like a, and, so, and it was going to be judged. He, God raises him up. This guy is all out for God. We don't even know how he got where, because his father was a, was a disaster. His grandfather was a disaster. Sure. He's just on fire for God. Didn't care what happened. When full blast, and this one man, one man changed the course of his nation, at least for an entire generation. Changed the nation. You know, God held off judgment one man. We have to be that man. We have to be that woman. Because God says, the eyes of the Lord are searching for that one, and he'll show himself mighty. This is the moment we have to be this. We have to be radical. Amen. Because these are radical times. Amen. We have to be radical people. Without a radical counterpunch, this culture's lost. Yeah. Nothing can save it. Nothing can save America. I speak at political rallies. Trump will be there and Trump's people mm -hmm. will be there. And uh, I hear people saying only Trump, I hear them say it out loud, only Trump can save America. When they say it, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, dear, dear Lord, help no. us. Because that's right. only Jesus can save that, America. That, that is right. And that's that's all we have. That, that's something that, you know, like something doesn't come up a lot, what you just said. Uh, but the thing is that there is, some, there is something too there. We have to be careful in both directions oh, because, yeah. because there is something even in the right wing where many right wing are getting away from the purity and the, uh, of the gospel and Jesus and putting their trust in politics. Oh, yeah. And that is not going to work. That, that's going to go. That's going to come back. You know, yeah. that's going to listen. Listen, I, I'm for, you know, and you we're I'm sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Anybody who's going to stand for God, anybody who's going to be better than, you know, better to enough against what the other side would be for God could be used by God. Yeah. But, but, my, but, my, but my trust is only in Jesus. Amen. My trust, and he's the only thing that can save. He's the only thing that can save me, only thing that can save anyone. And that's where we are. That's where we have to be. It's exactly where we are. Last thing I want to talk about. Uh, everybody should get The Return of the Gods. And, and uh, the last book is The, Just the Josiah, Josiah Manifesto. Yeah. And that's, yeah. A, that's a guide to the end times, the mystery and the guide to the end times. Okay. That, that's pertinent right now. Everybody wants yeah. to know what's coming. Oh, yeah. Because they how see to get culture ready. following. Yeah. Book, it's, right? how, it's how to get ready. Because I've never written a book with that in it. But what do we need to know because of what's coming? What do we need to be ready and to prevail? Let's talk about what happened in Miami. This is crazy. <laughs> and uh, I just prepped him a little and, bit about and this. And on a crazy note. <laughs> oh, let's say for everybody get out, you're crazy. I'm, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm folding my tinfoil hat right now. Yes. But here's this is what happened in Miami, okay? There's like a two or 300 cop car response. You should go look at the footage. It, it's insane. Anybody watching, we'll, we'll throw a little footage in right now. But from, from an aerial view. Uh, so these cop cars roll into the mall at Miami. People are running. They're going wild everywhere. It's like two or 300 police officers. All right, people are reporting that they're seeing like 
helicopters over Miami, airspace is shut down. All this stuff is, is out there, right? Um, and they're saying it was some kids fighting in the mall and they arrested four kids. Now, where I come from, I've never seen a two or 300 cop response to, uh, you know, fight in the mall. Maybe, maybe not. But there are, are, I can't substantiate it, but there are videos surfacing of people claiming this. Now, I'm not, even the, the, uh, the Daily uh, Wire. Wire talked about this. And some in jest, but some in like what it really is. And they threw up a, a, a video. And there's like, it's a, it's a video from the top, but there's a dark figure. You can't really tell what it is, but you can see the dark figure. Cops are shining lights on it. But some of these people were reporting and they were saying they saw shadowy eight to 10 foot figures. This is out there. It was trending. I mean, it's everywhere. Uh, eight to 10 foot figures appearing and disappearing in the mall, terrifying these people. So is that fanfare? Is it, uh, is it conspiracy theory stuff? Is it kids, you know what I mean, taking a weird situation and, and uh, blowing it up on the internet? Is it E.T.? Is it a demonic manifestation? Is it, uh, it's, it's wild. And could a scenario exist? I'll say this. My wife had a dream. We believe in dreams and visions before this happened. And this was the dream she had. I'm not saying this is what it is. I'm saying this is the dream. She had a dream. She woke up. She said, Brian, she dreams very accurate and prophetic and sometimes scares me the fulfillments of what she dreams the next couple of days. Mm. Uh, she says, Brian, I had a dream and the demonic and the angelic were trying to break through in cities in America. And she said in events and different places in America. And it's like they needed entrance right into our world, so to speak. And she said right now it was like the demonic could more easily enter in to America in different spots. Uh, they were looking for almost like, like open doors, if you will. But, but the angelic uh, were held back in a way. And she said they were held back in a way at the time. She felt like she woke up with the feeling like it was a, it was a, a shortage or a deficit of the prayers of the saints, mm. right? Mm. That, that, that like we hadn't, you know, the, mm. the prayer releases the power mm. of God, the movement of God, the, mm -hmm. the angelic activity. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, could these people in Miami, is it possible that we could be getting to such a demonized part in our history that there could be open demonic manifestations? It could be, you know, it could be. I mean, yeah. it, it's hard to hard to we comment, there. hard to comment on that. Yeah, um, to say what it was, but um, but certainly the overall principle is, you take God out, it's not the house isn't staying empty. You know, others are coming in, and they're they're and they're here, whether we see them or not. They're here, they're here. We're we're more power. We got the power of God. You know, there's nothing compared to God's power that we've got. But we got to know what we're dealing with. If you're in a fight and you're not fighting, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. Yeah. We better fight. That's, right. That's I, right. I call it, we better raise some hell for heaven in America. <laughs> yeah. I, I like raise hell with R-A-Z-E. Yeah. <laughs> raise that thing down. <laughs> Let's tear it down. Uh, it's time for us. The Bible says this. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. We can't let hell push on our gates. We have to push on those right. gates. That's right. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Where, where can they go uh, get yeah. in your resources? They, yeah, the, the Return of the Gods and the Josiah Manifesto and all my books are available pretty much everywhere. If you go on, go online right now, Amazon, anywhere, you can get it. Um, and I just pray people get it, not just for yourself, get it for people in your life because everybody's dealing with it and they need to, they need to know. that you know That's one thing. And um, it's pretty much all over. And also... Walmart has some of my books and Barnes and Noble and all that. So it's everywhere, you know. Um, and if they want to get in touch with the ministry, it's Hope of the World that I lead. We outreach to the world and, you know, to get the gospel out. And all my teachings are there and everything's there. It's hopeoftheworld.org. Um, and that's basically, yeah. That's, that's the stuff. It. Yeah. All right. Well, Rabbi, thank you so much for my coming. My blessing, Ryan. Hey, please uh, like, subscribe, share this, get it out there. Let's let the world know that Jesus loves them. We'll see you soon. Stay out of trouble. Bye-bye. <laughs>